Greetings from the past, my fellow time travelers, and welcome back to another episode of The Ladder. My name is Ty, and let's see what Ash found on the floor. What's this? It's already in Ash's hands before I can even react. Behind him, Becca and Zack are both giving the piece of paper an intrigued look. No! Give it back! It's just a paper. I don't care! Give it! Looks ancient, too. Why do you keep this around? I try to reach for it, but he holds the paper way above his head. I've never been particularly sensitive about my own height, but right now, I really wish I had that advantage over him. Don't open it! What's the big deal? It's oh, not please. like it's a love letter. I don't see any reason to... Hold on a second. This is, isn't it? No. Even if it is, it's not for you. Okay. Now I'm curious. Don't open it. I'm telling you, it's nothing like that. The rest of my words are lost when he unfolds the paper. I can't breathe. My heart feels stuck in my throat, pounding, threatening to burst out. Vaguely, I note how my hands are trembling at my sides. Clasping them together doesn't do any good. They are still shaking, but I hang on to them regardless. The awful sick weight that has taken its core in my stomach back in the open house returns full force. How do I fix this? How do I fix this? How do I fix this? Someone, please! Today is turning out to be the ho a horrible nightmare! Send this to five people or else. I knew it. That is why Rose isn't in our character overview by the relationships. She is the only one on this list who didn't look at the letter. That means only the people who look at the letter are going to get in danger, I guess. Well, that's interesting. Um, guys, I think we should listen to Bella first. Aren't you a few days early for Halloween? Ash waves the paper in front of me, giving me a fleeting glimpse of its contents. I don't need to see. I don't want to see. The letters, the words, every stroke written in blood is already embedded in my mind. Maybe I should have just thrown it away when I had the chance. That way... That way... It's not a prank. It makes all of them stop. Even I am surprised with how steady my voice is. What did you say? This isn't a prank! I saw Something. Hold on. Are we still talking about this paper? Or is it about the urban legend again? Both. I know it sounds ridiculous. You're saying this is a primitive version of a chain letter. And now that we've seen it, we're now cursed. You've got to be kidding me. See? This is why I didn't want to tell you guys. Isabella, aren't you taking this a bit too far? It's not a joke. Will you guys listen to me first? I saw something in the house earlier. It stood right in front of me. If I hadn't gotten away, that thing might have... Right. And in broad daylight, Isabella, even someone gullible would find the logic in that screwed up. There's also no way in hell that this supernatural shit is true. But it's real! What do you think I saw? This look on Isabella's face is creepy. A hallucination? A delusion? Didn't you say you fell down some stairs? So maybe Rebecca's right. It happened after, when I was trying to get away. I almost got stuck in the same room with that thing. We're all in danger. I thought you were my friends. Why don't you believe me? We are, and you know that. But this thing and that thing has got nothing to do with the other. When Rose called earlier, I thought she's just exaggerating. But based on what I'm seeing right now, hmm. Maybe it's better if we really postpone this for now. Don't bother. Oh my god. Without another word, I snatched the letter out of Ash's sand and stuffed it back in my bag, with more force than necessary. I'm tired. I got cursed, saw a ghost, probably lost a sale, got kicked out of the open house and I'm supposed to be hosting. My own friends won't believe me and all of them think I'm crazy. To top it all off, there's a dull ache at the back of my head, begging for a little attention. I can't afford to give right now. Honestly, there's only so much a person can take within a single day. I just want to go home, curl up in my bed and never think about today. But before I can take a single step away from the group... Guys! Zack rarely ever raises his voice, even when there's a point he wants to drive home. And hearing him take on that tone completely throws me off. Even Ash and Becca. 
Whatever harsh words yet to come out from the argument immediately die on our tongues. Why don't we all calm down first? I'm sure Isabella has her reasons too. No need to be hard on her. And hey, ain't this supposed to be a happy get-together? We haven't seen each other for months. I I'd really love to know what y'all have been up to. Oh, please. Oh. He has a point. Ash, for all his attempts to look cool and distant, has also been looking forward to this. He even took the time to call this morning for a reminder. He never does that. Becca too! I'm pretty sure that's another reason why she got out of bed today. Yet, despite Zack's attempt to lighten things up or Ash's and Becca's acquizzing gestures, the tightness in my chest remains. I should have just kept it to myself or at least went with the idea that it's a prank. If I did, things might not have turned out the way they had. No sorry mood, no bad vibes. Careless. So careless! Maybe living is the better decision for all of us? Nah. I want to stay for the movie. No. Shoot. But that's that. Maybe we can make up with Rebetta, Rebetta, Rebecca later on. I hope so, at least. Any other day, I'd excuse myself and go straight home. But this is something special to Zack. Something you worked so hard to bring to life. I should know better. I might be having a bad day, but being with the few people I care about far outweighs the idea of spending the rest of the day throwing a tantrum alone in my home. And what if the thing in the attic follows me home? I don't want to be left with my thoughts either. I can still see it whenever I close my eyes. And maybe if I stay, let our heads cool down first before telling them what happened, they will listen to me. There's nothing you can solve with a calm head. One step at a time, Isabella. That's what Mama used to tell me. Besides, I don't have the heart to ditch Zack. A smile is back on my face when I look back at them. If we keep arguing here, we're going to miss the first few minutes. All right, that's the Isabella I know. Oh, good. I thought for sure you were going to cry. <coughs> <laughs> this time, I really do send an elbow straight to his stomach. Stupid Ash! Being vertically challenged has its perks too. What was that for? Stop calling me a crybaby. I'm not one. Aw, oh, don't cry. Stop it. Okay, scaredy cat then. That too. If you repeat that, I swear I'll... <sighs> Let's just go. Without another word, Becca goes inside. She doesn't even stop to wait for us when I call after her. Ash and I exch exchange looks at the same. The question like swimming inside her minds. Did something happen at school after I left? Is she having a bad day too? I'll try asking her about it later, I guess. So, uh, you guys go catch up with her. I'll go get us the food, I promise. But you'll miss it. Didn't you say watching a movie without food ain't fun? And <laughs> it ain't <laughs> like I haven't seen it. I made it, remember? I'll be oh. in there soon. One friendly tap on my shoulder and then he's gone. A few moviegoers are still milling about. Some are still waiting in line for tickets, but otherwise most of the crowd are already inside. There's nothing much for us to do here now. Another word of protest comes from me when Ash gestured for the two of us to head inside. And then? Are you sure it wasn't one of the cleaning crews? Absolutely sure. Somehow, halfway through the movie, the conversation steered towards what happened in the mansion. To be fair, Zack was the one who brought it up again. In his own movie's premiere. Now, the film's just serving as a background noise while we're speaking in hushed tones, careful not to disturb anyone inside the small hall. Well, except for Ash. I just hope we don't end up arguing about it again. We'd all get kicked out for sure. Though, with how loud Ash's voice is, we'll probably get thrown out way before any argument happens. Only Becca still remains engrossed in the movie, completely ignoring us. She's been quiet the whole evening, speaking only when referred to. If I didn't know any better, I'd think we did something that offended her. Did we? And then I ran. You heard what happened after. I still think it's something else. It was standing right in front of me, Ash. 
He's one of the smartest people I know, but jeez, he should learn to listen. Plus, didn't he say he doesn't believe in these things? Why is he in this conversation again? I heard what you said, but it's a small room. There are a lot of things someone else could have done there without your knowledge. If I could see it up close, maybe I can... I am not going back there. Ain't that a problem if you're hosting an open house? Rose does the first floor tour. I ain't sure ghosts can be restricted to one room, Bella. There are no Ow. ghosts, Zack. Stop putting useless ideas in her head. Yeah, but I was thinking. Maybe all the house needs is a blessing. Wasn't it left uninhabited for years? Oh, the house did change hands over the years from one distant relative of the Ermengards to another. None of them bothered to live in it, though, and it remained that way up until its current owner decided to sell it. Why didn't I think of that? I didn't peg you as the religious type, Zack. Nothing like that, Ash. Who knows, though? It might bring something positive to the place. That's not a bad idea. I just don't know where I could find someone. You're not seriously considering his suggestion, are you? Wow. Do you have a better idea? I know where. I could contact him for you if you want. You'd do that? Or we can find you a psychologist instead. There are very few times in my life when I wish McGlowis can kill. This is one of those. Ash, that is not a very appropriate thing to say right now. No, wait, that's not what I meant. Ethnographer. I meant ethnographer. This guy's a psychologist too, of course, if you... Ashton, if you don't stop... Rebecca knows the guy I'm talking about too. She can vouch for him. Becca tears her eyes away from the screen at the mention of her name. Huh? What? Oh, are you talking about Professor Andrew? He used to work with my parents at the university. And can you guys keep it down? Sorry, the scaredy cat here mentioned curses. Not that I'm saying this is one, but talking to him is a better solution for me than getting a random priest to bless an old house. He'll even help you figure things out, teach you a couple things, and probably put your fears to rest, since this looks to be bothering you a lot. Ash might be right too, however, what Zack suggested is something I'm more familiar with. Granted, they don't believe me. They are only giving me these suggestions to put my mind at ease, but it's better than being ignored or being laughed at. I can take comfort in knowing they are willing to hear me out. So, what do you think? It's your call. We'll go with whatever you want. I don't know. I... Hmm. That's... That's so mean. I don't know. On one hand, I'm not one who would call a priest to bless a house. I would try to call someone who would help me investigate it. But since Ash is already here, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going with the professor. I'll think about it. But if ever, I'd like to give talking to Andrew a try. And I got a bonus with Ashton again. That doesn't surprise me. Is that okay? Won't he have other things to do? He is a bit busy, but he'll make time for me. He's my go-to person when I'm stuck in something. He won't mind if I bring a friend with me this time. If you're sure. I guess that settles it then. Guys, I said keep it down. <laughs> you keep insisting that we still watch it. You're not even paying attention yourselves. It ain't a big deal, Rebecca. I'm the one who broached the subject in the first place. It's still your film, Zachary. A good film, mind you. You worked hard on this. The least we could do is watch it with you. And that's what you're all doing. I really appreciate all of you making time for this. Sorry, Becca. We'll stop now. I throw her an apologetic look, even if Ash's the only one she could be reprimanding, but her attention is already back on the screen. She's ignoring us again. When Becca's acting this way, there's a big chance something's nagging at her. We really need to talk. We all fall into a comfortable silence after the kind only you can share with people you're most at ease with. For the first time today, the leather lay forgotten in my bag, if only for a few hours. Oh, a journal update. Let's see. There should be this one. Yeah, because we read that already, didn't we? Yeah. Luxburm Independent Film and Theatre Festival celebrated its ninth year discovering new creative talents in the film industry, included in the few showcased 
This year was Zachary Steele's Blanchons, Dark Times of the Black British, Isabel Santos, Ashton Frey and Rebecca Gales were also seen amongst the crowd for its premiere. And there is the... Yeah, you know what I mean. But we can't get it. Interesting. But we can still watch the profiles, can we? No. I guess we need to play as them. Night has fallen by the time we exit the movie's house. Despite the late hour, the streets are still bustling full of people. Those about to head home, those set to meet someone, even those simply wandering about. Walking in the sea of unfamiliar souls, it strikes me how easy it is for one to get lost in a city as nondescript as Luxburn. I was afraid too. At one point, back when I was new and had just set food in this place. Now, with familiar faces walking with me, it feels a little like home. Zack and Ash bid us goodbye shortly before Beck and I crossed to the other side of the street. The former claiming he's got a few freelance jobs to take care of before the day ends. And Ash? Uh, who knows? He never tells. Sometimes he'll just randomly appear at your doorstep looking for a place to crash. He does that to Zack a lot, much to the latter's frustration. But he's a busy guy too, in spite of the laid back air he gives out. Thanks for today, everyone! Bye! No problem, Zack. I'm sorry for what happened earlier. <coughs> huh? Maybe I should have taken the priest? A sensation. Cold, sickening, drowning. My chest tightening, breathing becoming labored. I can taste blood in my mouth. The edges of my vision blur. In the distance, amidst the countless nameless people going about their lives, a voice reaches out to me. You can hear the help me, that's so creepy. Pleading, even as I clench my eyes tight and clasp my hand over my ears. Whispering and whispering and whispering. Calling out. But guys, that's it for this episode. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like, subscribe to my channel. If you're already subscribed, click on the notification bell down below so you get notified when I upload my videos. Share us on Twitter and Facebook. And guys, we'll see you in the future or back in the next. I am going to die.